Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network. One of the things that can be such a joyful part of the process is when it starts working. And all of a sudden you can do this thing that you haven't been able to do for months. Welcome to Breaking Down Biosimilars, a podcast that sheds light on biosimilars and helps you better understand the role they play in your healthcare, now and in the future. I'm Zoe Rothblatt, Associate Director of Community Outreach with the Global Healthy Living Foundation. And I'm Connor Mertens, Patient Advocate and Community Outreach Manager at GHLF. Our goal is to introduce you to biosimilars, what they are, how they get approved, their potential savings and the promises they hold. We also hear from a few people who've been taking biosimilars about their own experiences, and we cover some of the common myths about biosimilars and try to separate fact from fiction. So Connor, in the last episode, we heard from Christina Montoya and Lena Anderson about the real life questions and concerns they have about making treatment decisions, whether it be for an original biologic or a biosimilar. Right, and in this episode, we continue that conversation and hear more from them about that feeling when you know your treatment is working, the possibility of adjusting treatment, and ultimately, if they feel more comfortable on biosimilars. And these two patient advocates really know their stuff, so let's sit back and hear what they have to say. Good idea. Let's pick up the conversation where I asked about what injection day is like for them. What is injection day like for you? I think the first thing I want to say is that they, you might feel nervous, but remember that this is a tool to get back, to get your life back, that, that this is your friend, because I think a lot of people have very negative feelings towards medication and especially something like biologics and biosimilars, which there are some very scary myths out there about them. And I think, remember that you're doing this to get your life back. And I, and I think, I know it sounds a little flaky, but I, I think our attitude towards medication matters. And I think that if you see it as a tool or a friend or a conduit towards the life you want to lead, I think you are going to adjust to the whole process much easier. And I'll say like all these years later, medication day is, injection day is like any other day for me. It's just something I do in between other tasks. But I have found out that like some of the side effects, for instance, is fatigue. And for me, I have fibromyalgia, so it also gives me muscle aches. And those both kick in about six hours after the shot, I've learned. So I take it at dinner time, which means I sleep through most of it. It also means it's the best sleep of the week on, on injection day. So if you have side effects like fatigue, then use it to your benefit rather than just kind of suffer through it. So I, you know, I, I agree that my number one anti-inflammatory tip when you're living with rheumatoid arthritis is take your medications as prescribed <laughs> and do not miss it. And so the first thing that I do is I put it on my calendar. And now because I'm taking two different injections, so I... I just have just, it's an appointment with my injection mm-hmm. <laughs> and I get that on that. I try to do it on the, at night. So I know I can get the night uh, sleep and the following day, I, I take a lot of fluids. I, mm-hmm. even if I'm not, I don't have a lot of appetite. I keep my fluids up or I drink my calories with smoothies or mm-hmm. soups or things that are soft. Um, but like fluids is very important just to kind of keep that. Because it's, it's, think about a hangover. What do you do when you get drunk? You just have to drink lots of fluids. <laughs> <laughs> if I might interject also, I think also just kind of pay attention to how you feel. Because I know that, for instance, side effects is, for me, variable. Some days I'm fine and maybe just a little tired or a little sluggish. Some sometimes I don't have a lot of appetite for a day or two. At other times I could eat the dining table because I I eat anything that's not nailed down. Some days I get really tired. And sometimes 
it gives me such a boost of energy that I feel like the energizer buddy. It, it, it varies. And you never know what you're going to get. It is apparently like a box of chocolates. So um, enjoy it when it's good. And when it's bad, just make sure that you're gentle with yourself and maybe try to plan that plan for it so that you're not putting a whole lot of intensive focus on energy things on the day after your injection and and maybe make that a quiet day if you can that's true i i am finding that with the biosimilar because i'm taking it every week it seems to uh, I don't feel as fatigued and I don't feel like that withdrawal that I used to feel when I was taking the other biologics, when I had to wait a month or I had to wait like two weeks. So I'm finding that there's a better kind of buffer. I still feel a little bit of fatigue, but before I could actually feel I'm running out of medication. I, I don't have it in my system anymore. I'm finding that with biosimilars, I'm not feeling that way. I'm still taking things kind of slow for now. But that's a big difference, I noticed, compared to other. Well, and I think it speaks to the fact that, not, that everybody reacts differently. Like I know, okay, I'm gonna share. I'm gonna share something that I don't often share. My body metabolizes things really quickly, so mm-hmm. I need to take take it more often than the prescribed, the, the recommended doses every two weeks for my biologic. And I take it every 10 days because otherwise it doesn't actually control things. And I remember initially, initially I was on another TNF blocker and we had to do this whole, we had to play with things like dose and timing and all of that. And initially my, this was very back in the beginning. So 2015 when it was still fairly new. And initially my, my rheumatologist kind of, well, she's known me for a long time. So she knows my body's weird or interesting. And so she just kind of accepted it. And then she came back to me a couple of years later and said, you know what? I know I thought you were weird, but the literature now says that different people react differently and metabolize it more quickly, more slowly. So often you have to to play with the dose or the timing. Um, and I think a lot of people don't know that. And I think what it speaks to for you, um, Christina, is that if you were taking medication where you are running out of meds before your next dose, then if that's more widely known, it sounds like you needed the past medication more frequently, especially now that it's once, once a week that it's working better. But how do you assess that? Uh, I Maybe just the pattern of how you're feeling, but there's not a, maybe an actual test that they can run and say, hey, you're no, like I- a metabolizer. <laughs> No, there, there isn't. But I think it's about that relationship with you and your doctor when you go, when you say, I'm doing really well on it, but only for 10 days. And so the last four are, are not pleasant. And then for your doctor to have the time and resources available to know and say, well, we can mess with this. We can mess with the timing. So let's try it every 10 days instead. You bring up a good point about checking in with your doctor while you're on your treatment, especially we talked about the wait and see period. What kinds of things do you both look out for while on your treatment and bring up at your appointments to say, you know, like, this is what I think is working. This is what I think isn't. When I start a new treatment, I try to journal my symptoms. I don't journal every single day, every single thing that I do. But I, when I start a new treatment, I do like to track what, what is happening with my body, where I'm feeling pain. Am I feeling any morning stiffness, uh, fatigue, um, how many hours I can actually be active in the day, and um, any, any, any infections, because I've always been prone to infections everywhere. So if... I, that's kind of what I track, and that has been a, a play me ma- um, a major uh, reason for changing my biologics in the past. So tracking infections is important to me in uh, my physical activity. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's one of the things that I I track is like what are the side effects like. Um, I try to pay, pay attention to how I'm feeling. Um, and I think, and I think one of the things that can be such a joyful part of the process is when it starts working 
and you find yourself doing something and it can be the tiniest little thing. One of mine was picking up my mail that I could actually make, do the movements involved in, in picking up my mail. And all of a sudden you can do this thing that you haven't been able to do for months. And that's, that's really incredible. So I, I think that that's, do I write it down? I probably should, but I've had this disease since I was four. So it's decades. This was before trackers were invented or the suggestion that you should write things down. So I just sort of learned to do that pattern recognition in my head. Um, so if I notice something, I think now if I was starting something new, I would definitely be writing it down or using a symptom, symptom tracker app just to make sure or maybe it, it all depends. You know, at a certain point when it starts working, you get too busy to live, too busy living to actually yeah. spend too much tracking time. And, and I think that's one of the wonderful parts of these medications. That's a great point, actually, that like you get busy <laughs> living and enjoying. I I feel more focused. Like I can actually read a full article and, and get something out of it, right? <laughs> and, not, and not till I just reread. I said, what did I just read? What did yes. I just read? Gosh, it's just so, like frustrating. So just enjoying those little moments are just, <laughs> they're so great. I, I think maybe uh, um, people in our community really understand that, how great mm -hmm. is that, that I could actually walk my boy to the park, stay with him for an hour when I couldn't do that before. And I think for me, one of the first signs that my biologic was working was the ability to focus. And it was incredible. It was like getting... Because at a certain point, I think when it's really bad, it feels like you're losing your mind. And that's really scary. And I think when you have RA, you can probably deal with a significant amount of pain. It's not fun, but you can cope. But it's that losing your ability to focus and remember and think clearly. And then getting that back, it's, it's just so amazing. really kind of overarching question is are you glad that you've made the switch or that you've uh you know that you're you're taking these new medications yes my husband says i am a better mood <laughs> 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 i don't seem to get as cranky i i've been able to decrease my my prednisone dose i know Coming from five to three i'm telling you after being like 20 years on it it's a great win so mm -hmm. I'm starting to see really a very positive patterns. And so I just wanted to stay <laughs> for a long time. And for you, Lena, after hearing Christina talk about her experience on a biosimilar, do you feel more comfortable with it, still have concerns? What's on your mind? Well, I think I, I, I would have concerns about switching because I, like I said, the particular biologic I'm on now, I've been on for 15 years and it's working and, and I don't want to, you know, do, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So I would be very concerned about being forced to switch for a couple of reasons. One is because bi biosimilars are slightly different. I don't know if I would respond as well. Like, and I also know that it's possible I might respond even better, but in the concern is what if I don't respond well? Uh, especially going, if I then had the opportunity to go back on the biologic I'm on now, um, because we know that if you go off a of biologic for a while, it may not work as well when you go back on it. So I would still be very concerned about uh, switching. On the other hand, like if this biologic stops working, I don't think I would be concerned about like if I'd had to try another another medication, I don't think I would be concerned about biosimilar. Sounds like a healthy level, a healthy level of skepticism. Yeah, it's like, I, yes, I would be, if I had to switch, I'd absolutely be willing to try, but um, don't make me please, <laughs> you know? 
I, I think one thing that gave me comfort is that the biosimilar that I'm using is a biosimilar to the biologic that has been on the market for over 20 years. Yes. So I feel that that gave me comfort. It's not one of the mm-hmm. newer biologics. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. that biologic has been tested and there has been quite a few years when this has been running. So it's not like I'm in the clinical trial and so let's see if it works. And again, two or three other biologic, four biologics already failed me. So Mm-hmm. why not give me this one a try right mm-hmm. no and I think when you come from a different point of view like when I first started my biologic when nothing else had helped mm-hmm. or um and and then I had spent like while I was waiting for funding it took uh eight months of waiting and my life went into the toilet during the, those eight months at that point, you could have given me, I don't know, cobra venom, and I would cheerfully have taken it and hope that it would work. I don't, at that point, you just don't care. It's just give this to me. Might it work? Excellent. Let's try. And it, it turned out it worked really well and, and basically gave me back my life. And I think that's the, the promise and the hope that's involved in these medications is that they can quite literally and metaphorically save your life which it did for me i i believe that too i i I've, i still have i still go by that <laughs> the advice by my first rheumatologist from like 20 years back is that you have to consider this side effects of the disease or the medication mm-hmm. yeah. and i terrified of the side effects so from mm-hmm. rheumatoid arthritis mm-hmm. and so it's a uh, it's a balancing act it, it absolutely is. And I think also what I would normally say to people who are very nervous about taking medication and saying, well, it, exactly that. The side effects of rheumatoid arthritis are a guarantee, whereas side effects to the medication is a possibility that may not happen. Um, and I'm proof, like I grew up in the, in the time before treatment, um, permanent wheelchair user with double hip replacement by age 16 I know what happens to untreated RA and you don't want to be there. And that was exactly what I was told 20 years ago. And by my 40s, oh. I was going to be in a wheelchair, although mm-hmm. Lena has taught us how to really rock it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but that was really the fate of anyone being diagnosed yeah. and having no access to biologics at all. And biologics also changed my life. It's but it's been a roller coaster, but I'm still very grateful for that therapy. We still need more and better treatments, and we need to, to be able to predict which biologic, which medication will help for which person, um, because there's still too much trial and error. But I think the fact that like, when I grew up with this, it was common to within ten years be disabled in a wheelchair, unemployed, um, and now. RA is becoming an invisible illness, which is a miracle, and that's thanks to biologics. Uh, I had a conversation with my rheumatologist once where she said she's been my rheumatologist for almost 30 years. And when I first started with her, a lot of her patients you were wheelchair users, and um, but she has, I don't know, six, 600 plus patients. And now, now that biologics are available, two people among her patient group use a wheelchair, me and someone else. They, that tells you just how impactful these medications are. Absolutely. Thank you both so much for sharing with us today. This was a really wonderful conversation, and we're just so grateful to have you share about your personal experiences, your conversations with your doctors, and just really help our listeners out there. So thank Thank you. you. Thank you so much for the conversation. (laughs) Well, everyone, we hope you learned something new about biosimilars and the experience of starting on one. We'd love to hear your feedback, so send your email to breakingdownbiosimilars at ghlf.org, or better yet, include a short video or audio clip. Thanks for listening to Breaking Down Biosimilars, a podcast that brings to light biosimilars and helps you better understand the role they play in your healthcare now and in the future. If you like this episode, give us a rating and write a review on Apple Podcasts. It'll help more people like you find us. I'm Connor Mertens. And I'm Zoe Rothblatt. See you next time. Be inspired, supported, and empowered. 
This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network.